Hello, seventh graders. Uh, we are in section 5.6. If you remember, we talked about direct variation in chapter 5.5, and that was y equals k times x. Today, we're going to talk about inverse variation. So we're going to actually do these four problems in this chart, which I do not want you to write down in your um, notes. It's on page 284 if you ever want to refer back to it, but I would rather you just pay attention. So here's what the problem says. Suppose you are a volunteer part of a volunteer crew constructing affordable housing. Building a house requires a total of 160 workdays. For example, a crew of 20 people can complete a house in 8 days. How long would it, would it take a crew of 40 people? Well, let's figure out the table first. If you're looking at the table, the first column is your x, the second column is your y. And this is the total number of workdays. So if you have a crew size of 2, and your construction days is 80, that means you're going to have a total workdays of 160. Notice this. This is 160. This is 160. This is 160. All of these are going to be 160. So as you can see, 2 times 80 gives you 160. So 5 times what gives you 160? It'd be 32. 8 times what gives you 160? 20. What number, what would the crew size have to be? Multiplied by 16 days will give you 160. It'd be 10. And then 28 and 160, 40 times what gives you 160? It'd be 4. So how long would it take a crew of 40 people? It would take 4 days. Now, if you graphed x, y in this, in this problem, you would actually get a chart that would look something like this x and y, and let's say x was crew size, and y was days, you would get a chart that looks something like this. And if you drew it, now we're, we normally would not draw this because we're talking about crew people and you can't have part of a crew or half of a crew member. So if you drew it though, so I'm just going to draw it and dot it, you'll notice that it's not linear. So describe what happens to the construction time as the crew size increases. So I want you to do this on your own. What happens with the construction time as the crew increases? It goes down. So you would write construction time decreases. Because obviously if you have more people working on the job, your number of days is going to actually be less. So what's the relationship between x and y here? You'll notice that x times y gives me another number. And we have just written the equation for inverse variation. If you take x and times it by y, you're going to get k. And in this case, it's the total number of workdays, which is 160. And here is what you do need to write down. This is your definition, your key concepts of inverse variation. An equation that is in the form x times y equals k, or y equals k divided by x. Notice if we had x, y divided by k. If we solve this equation for y, you'd divide both sides by x, and you would get that. Now, k cannot be 0, so make note of that. k cannot be 0, because a number times itself, if we're talking about numbers, will not give you 0 here. This is called inverse variation, so that's your vocab word. Now, the constant of variation for inverse variation is k. That is your constant. Notice in our activity, the total number of workdays is 160. That was constant. K is the product of x and y. 
which is part of an ordered pair xy. So looking at our graph here, we have a graph and we have two sentences. Inverse variations have graphs with the same general shape. If we look over here, this is the general shape that an inverse variation function would look like. You'll notice it starts off decreasing and then it gradually decreases, but it still decreases, but it gets gradual as the x value increases. So it starts off very steep with a negative slope and then it gradually decreases as we're going along. So this purple line represents x times y equals 2. X, now notice as the constant gets bigger, it gets farther away from the origin, but it smooths out as well. You can see from the graph here how the constant of variation, which is your k, affects the graph. If you know the values of x and y for a point on the graph of an inverse variation, you can use the point to find the constant of variation k and the equation of the inverse. Now, this is really easy. To find k, what do you do? You take x times y. So in order to find k, you would just multiply the x-coordinate times the y. So example number one. I want you to write an equation for the inverse variation knowing that y varies inversely with x. And we know here that y is 7 and x is 5. So this is super, super easy. If you memorize this, which you must, xy or x times y equals your constant of variation. x times y or xy equals k. If we know y is 7 and x is 5, we know the constant is what? It's, it's going to be 7 times 5, which is 35. So k equals 35. We plug it in. xy is 35. There's your equation for inverse variation. Now, you could also solve it for y. If you solved it for y, you'd divide both sides by x. So, y equals 35 divided by x would also be an appropriate equation. So why don't you try this one on your own? If I told you y is 9 and x is 2, what would your equation be? xy equals what? 18. And that's your answer. The next thing we're going to do is this. I want you to write this down. Say we have the ordered pair x sub 1, y sub 1. And we also have an ordered pair x sub 2, y sub 2. That just means we have two separate values for our ordered pairs. Now, these ordered pairs are pairs of an inverse variation. Each ordered pair of the inverse variation has the same product. That means this. We know that x sub 1, y sub 1, if we multiplied them together, x sub 1, y sub 1, that would have to equal k. We also know that if we take x sub 2, y sub 2, if we multiply these together, that would also equal k. So because they both equal k, we can use substitution to have our equation of this, x sub 1 times y sub 1, which is this, has to equal x sub 2 times y sub 2. Since they're part of the same equation, they have to have the same product. So let's do example 2. So example 2 says, the points 3, 8, and 2, y are two points on the graph of an inverse variation. Find the missing value. Well, we know that if we take the product of 3 times 8, it would have to equal the product of 2 times y. So our equation is really just 24 equals 2y. If you solve for y, the missing value would be 12. That's it. The missing value is 12. So the actual ordered pair would be 212, which is on the graph that also includes the point 38. That's it. So why don't you try this one on your own? Figure out the missing value 
of y if our two points are 3y and 5, 9? What would the value of y have to be? Hopefully, if you figured this out, you would have the equation 3y equals 45, and therefore you get y equals 15. Here's example three. The weight needed to balance a lever varies inversely with the distance from the fulcrum to the weight. Where should Julio, who weighs 150 pounds, sit to balance the lever? Here's our picture. So we have a, a lever, a teeter-totter kind of. The girl weighs 120 pounds. Julio weighs 150 pounds. The fulcrum is the middle or where the balance is going to be levered at. So we know this varies inversely. So where should Julio sit? So the weight of 120 pounds is 6 feet from the fulcrum. A weight of 150 pounds is X feet from the fulcrum. The weight and the distance vary inversely. That means X and Y, these would be X and Y. So we could let the weight be your X per se, and the Y be your distance. So we would write it out like this. Weight times distance, right here, equals weight times distance. So we could take the girl. 120 times 6, and 150 equals X. We know they're equal since they vary inversely. 120 times 6 gives me 720, and 150 times X gives me 150X. I divide both sides by 150. That means X is 4.8. So we would know that Julio should sit four and eight tenths feet away from the fulcrum to balance the lever. Now, let's recap what we just learned. Inverse variation and direct variation. Recall that direct variation is an equation that is y equals kx. This summary, this is important, I am giving you a summary. Let me actually make a nice star. So let's draw a star. Here we go. Big star. You have to know this summary. Direct variation is linear. When y varies directly with x, that means y directly is proportional to x. The ratio y divided by x is constant. So to find k, you would take y divided by x, and it makes a line. So y equals kx. So if you look, it can be either way. But inverse variation, when it says y varies inversely with x, y is inversely proportional to x. So the product x times y is what gives you your constant. And the graph looks something like this. Now in example four, I'm going to give you two tables. And I want you to determine which table represents direct variation or inverse. And then I want you to write an equation for each. Here's what you do first. Whenever you have a table, I want you to look at x and y. If the value of y and x seem to vary, we have to determine how it varies. So let's check the ratio. Now remember, our two ratios are this. To find the constant, remember we take y divided by x. This is direct variation. To do inverse variation, to find the constant, what do we do? Remember, we have x, y equals k, so how do we find k? We take x times y. So we can just look. If I multiplied x times y together, 2 times 5, that gives me 10. 4 times 10, well, that gives me 40. We know it's not inversely related. So we could check k equals y divided by x. If I took 5 divided by 2, what do I get? I get 2 and a half. If I take 10 divided by 4, I get 2 and a half. If I take 25 divided by 10, I get 2 and a half. So we know that this varies directly. So my equation would be y equals, remember it's y equals kx. We know k is right here. This is k. So it would be 2 and a half x. So my equation would be y equals 2 and fx. B, multiply x and y together. 
5 times 20, oh, it's 100. 10 times 10, 100. 25 times 4, 100. So if we multiply each of these together, we get our value of k. The value of k is what? It's 100. So our equation would be xy equals 100. I want you to pause the video and do these two on your own. If you did it correctly, you would find out that A is inverse variation, and our equation would be xy equals 36, and B is direct variation, and that would be y equals 4x. Our last example is a real-world problem-solving problem. Example 5. Explain whether each situation represents direct or inverse variation. Now, I have the answers here, but let's just look at the problems. The first one is A, carpooling. The cost of 20 bucks worth of gasoline is split among several people. Well, the cost of person times the number of people equals the total cost of gasoline. So if I had two people that were going, you would take 2 times 10 equals 20. But if you had four, times, uh, four people going, you would take 4 times $5. They would each pay 5 bucks. That would give you 20. If you had 10 people going, 10 times they would each pay $2. So x times y, in this case, you would have x times y would give you 20. Therefore, the total cost is a constant product, which means A is inverse variation. B, you buy several markers for 70 cents each. The cost per marker times the number of markers equals the total cost. Since the ratio is the cost divided by the marker, it will always be 70 cents each. So it's going to always be 70 cents x. This represents direct variation.